Hey everybody, John with OWL, and behind me you see the OWL Blue Transit, and this is an install video for the side steps on the Transit. Where's my finger? There we go. They are almost identical to installing on the Sprinter, so uh, forgive me, instead of redoing the entire video, what I'm gonna do is start off with the Transit specific stuff, and then uh, the rest of the actual functional installation, how you install the rib nuts, uh, how you put the brackets together, it's all identical to Sprinter. So I'm gonna to link to the Sprinter video or continue into the Sprinter video after I talk about the transit specific stuff. So um, the first and most important bracket is going to be the first one. So talk about spacing. We're gonna do 16 inches back from this kind of, see where this kind of door seam is or where the start of this plastic, where this plastic um, kind of feature dies into the rest of the running board. So. You're gonna line up basically the front, you're gonna want basically the front of the, the side step lining up with that. It looks better aesthetically and it also puts this in the right spot for the driver. So, or passenger, excuse me. Gonna go 16 inches back and that's the center of your first bracket, okay? Now, uh, the second bracket, and also keep in mind, people get really, really uh, concerned about specifics. The only one that really matters inch perfect is the first one after you go back on the van it's really not uh critical that you get it down to the centimeter or inch or millimeter or whatever um it's really just making sure you're supporting the bracket kind of evenly certainly on the passenger side i can show you where now the next bracket the second bracket i'm going to take you under the van to show you uh the features you want to look for to mount that second bracket so going under the van up there you can see the first bracket installed and you can kind of see how that installs you've got your riv nuts up here it falls just below this bolt and then you've got these in your pinch weld and obviously you've got to um look out for kind of these sorry you gotta look out for these features um when you're installing this stuff sometimes again coming back to um that may not be absolutely inch perfect uh but you can drill through that and use that as well so this next one this one's, again, it doesn't matter uh, if it's perfect or not, but kind of centering it under these two bolts. As you see coming down here, there's twin bolts that are roughly, let me grab my tape measure, uh, about 41. So it looks like these bolts are somewhere in the 38 to 42 inch range for reference. And you're just gonna basically put this bracket under those bolts. It's a good spot for that next bracket. Then for the rest of this, um, these brackets, what you can do is put the last passenger side one here. You can't put it there because there's a hole. So we just put it right in front of that hole. You obviously can't put it at the back of the step because of how the um, kind of construction of the unibody is. So you want to mount this one kind of as far back as you can go. And then your last bracket you're going to put in is actually the third bracket in line. One, two, three. But this is the last one you put in and you just center it roughly between the last bracket and the second bracket. And that's gonna give you the best uh, support on this. And if at any time you need to move, if you need to move this bracket an inch this way, a couple inches that way, it really doesn't matter. You just wanna make sure that you have them in those general locations. Now let's go for spacing over on the driver's side. So on the driver's side, same measurement here from this feature front about 16 inches back to mount your first bracket. Then you kind of move back here and you don't necessarily need it on the very end. No one's really gonna step back here, but you put your second bracket, again, we're doing that kind of centering technique. Second bracket is gonna be back here towards the end of the step. And you can kind of go under there and see any features. Let's go double check and see if there's anything in the way. So all pretty open. Um, you've got these little features in here so you just kind of miss those with these bolts when you install it but <clears throat> you want to put that last or excuse me the second bracket you install is the third bracket on the step and that goes at the back and then you kind of want to center this one if anything cheat it towards the driver because that's where most of the weight's going to be on the step so you can actually cheat this one up personally i wouldn't necessarily center it i'd move it up another maybe six inches but that's kind of totally up to you and again, I come back to, um, this doesn't need to be inch perfect. It's really something that um, 
you can just kind of ballpark and it's going to support the step. Now, one of the things I do want to talk about is this plastic. So the in fact back here where we were testing our side ladder, see this trimmed out plastic here. So this side plastic can come off. And as someone who's taken it off, it sucks. Believe me, you don't want to take this off because two things will happen. Uh, maybe three uh, bloody knuckles. Uh, you'll be pissed off because it takes a while. And third, you'll break a bunch of snaps. Garandang tee it. So what we do for the plastic for the brackets is on one side, we took it all the way off, installed the brackets, put it back on. Then what we did for the second side is just trim out the plastic. It works so much better. So I'll show you that. But basically, the easiest way to see it is kind of what we've done here for where our ladder is going to be. And you can see that this trimmed out once the side step is on, it's not visible. So we'll go back to the uh, driver's side and I'll show you that. All right, try to show you a good shot of this. All right, so what you can see here is this is how the plastic is normally from the factory. It comes all the way down and basically touches that pinch weld. But what we did is you just cut it, just cut up. You can use a sharp X-Acto knife, cut off disc, anything. Just basically cut out the bottom area where the bracket's gonna be and then install the bracket. As you can see, none of that plastic is visible from the top. So that is the easiest, in my opinion, is to cut that out. You don't have to be super exacting. You just don't come over this lip, which is fairly obvious. You can kind of see here better. You just trim kind of to this line. We trim this out for big tires. So you can kind of see how this is uh, kind of even with the earth, and then it turns up to be vertical under this feature here. So you just trim it about that corner line so you have access to get those bolts in, etc. So those are basically all the kind of quirks, if you will, for installing the transit steps versus the sprinter steps. The rest of the process will basically be the same as sprinter. Obviously disregard the measurements in the sprinter video because you have the measurements I just gave them to you. And if you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to support. Uh, Info, uh, support at Owl Vans or give us a call. Thanks so much. I want to say one last thing before uh, I leave you to the Sprinter video and uh, my colleague here, Moto, just reminded me of it. When you're installing the steps, <clears throat> they're kind of at their limit um, as far as adjustability on a transit. And so you might uh, want to take two people so that you can hold it parallel. You know, you might need to have someone kind of lifting here and holding the back out while you tighten that down. That will allow you to make sure that you get the step parallel. Um, again, like I said, it's kind of right on the edge of adjustability for these because some of the same brackets are used in both vehicles. But as you can tell by this, you absolutely can get it straight and even, but it might take two sets of hands. Hey everybody, John with OWL. I am sitting here in my office and you may be asking yourself why are we sitting in your office if we're gonna do a sidestep install video? Well, we'll get outside to the van here in a moment, but I thought it was gonna be a good idea to start with kind of the various tools that we're gonna need for the, for the installation as well as walk you through the brackets and how they function. Um, sidestep install is not a terribly difficult thing to do. It is time consuming. So understand that if you do wanna get it installed by like one of our OWL off-road centers, you can, uh, but if you wanna do it yourself, it's absolutely something you can tackle. It's just a matter of, um, it's gonna take a little while. And that's because there are a number of things you have to bolt together. And we are gonna be using some riv nuts, which can be a little time consuming to put in. We have hydraulic uh, riv nut guns and air uh, pneumatic uh, riv nut guns that make it go a lot faster. But since you're not gonna be installing these all day, every day, you'll probably get by with this. Let's actually start with this gun. This is a riv nut gun and how a riv nut works. I'm gonna show you with this plate. So the way it works is because we don't have access to the backside to put on a nut, you use something called a riv nut. And the way a riv nut works is um, you put, you insert uh, the riv nut from the front side and then by actuating this riv nut gun, it pulls the backside forward and actually crimps the back on there. So you see how you've got that spot you can thread in and it crimps on the backside. So what do you need to worry about with riv nuts? Well. With riv nuts, you want to make sure they're tight because if you don't squish the back enough, they can spin and obviously you can't thread a bolt into something that's spinning. So you want to make sure when you're doing uh, the insulation of these riv nuts that you make them nice and tight. And then of course, you want to paint the inside of those holes. So when you're drilling those holes to install the riv nuts, anytime you drill a hole in your van, whether it's for our stuff or someone else's, you're going to want to paint it. The cool thing is 
we're underneath the body of the vehicle, so you need to worry about your exterior paint job at all. You can just grab um, a rattle can or a, a spray paint. We we love uh, Rust-Oleum Rust Reformer. It just lays down and dries really quick. It's matte black, so it looks good, and uh, that's what we use. So we have a link to this on our website. Why are we using this particular gun for this? Well, the reason we use this is because it's got a short... Um, a short throw and it hangs off the bottom. So a lot of the riv nut guns kind of look more like bolt cutters. They've got a big long uh, uh, extension so you can get leverage to make it tighter and make it go a little faster. This one's gonna take a little bit more time, but you're under a van with a bunch of stuff, suspension components, drive shafts, these kinds of things. You don't really have room to use one of the big ones. So this is what we recommend. This also comes with a quarter inch, I don't know what you'd call it, uh, tip for the gun. This is what we're going to be using to install these side steps. So good thing to have around. You can just keep it around, but it does come with the quarter inch bit. And that's what we're going to be using to install those riv nuts. So when you're installing those riv nuts, you're going to want this drill bit. It is a, don't you love standard? Uh, 23 60 fourths. There you go. 23 60 fourths is the size drill bit that you're going to want for these riv nuts. And then for installing your brackets uh, when you want to drill through the pinch weld for the bottom of the bracket it is going to be a one quarter inch drill bit so the two drill bits that you need are a 23 60 fourths and a quarter inch drill bit good news is these are pretty standard sizes so if you have a variety pack of drill bits you should be good to go with most things if you over drill the size of the hole it shouldn't matter so for example this quarter inch if you don't have a quarter inch but you have something a little bigger that's fine with riv nuts, it is not okay to choose a larger size because if you choose a, choose a larger size, uh, you can't get that riv nut to seat properly uh, and to squish down. So you are going to want that 23 drill bit for those riv nuts. This is not our tool. If you're uncomfortable using a riv nut gun, then definitely reach out to us and we can get you set up with an install for these. Uh, practice with this before you go straight at your van. Find a little piece of scrap metal, drill some holes in it, and practice crimping these down. The way this works is you're going to want to, um, I'm not the world's best with one of these things, but what you do is you thread, and again, consult the instructions of, of the riv nut gun. I'm going to give you a quick high level. So the way this works, if I take this riv nut off, and if you've seen this, feel free to fast forward if you used a riv nut gun before. But as you pull here, see how it retracts that tongue or that bit that sticks out. So what's gonna happen is if you have an actual riv nut on here, and let's put this in this piece of metal. As you pull this, it's gonna start to widen that riv nut because it's pulling from this far end. And so I tightened it a little bit. Now I release and now I tighten this back thing again. And what that's gonna do is screw it in more so that I can get another pull with the rib nut gun. It's a little bit hard to hold the, the plate and do it at the same time, but you can already see that that is starting to squish that rib nut. And so you just keep going. But right now you can see the plate still spins. So I have not squished that rib nut enough. So I'll do it again and then we'll keep tightening. And this is where we talk about, this is not a hard installation, but it can be a little time consuming. So. Now we've gotten to the point where the rib nut is squished enough that we can unscrew this whole thing from it. And you won't be able to see the backside of the rib nut, so you just want to make sure that it's not spinning. So you want to kind of get a feel for how tight to make it. This is probably um, the most fiddly, which I say a lot in our installs. Um, item that you're going to have to do. If you just keep crimping this over and over again, it's going to eventually strip the threads out. But um, I didn't go quite as far as the other one in this plate, but the important thing is it's not spinning and that's really all that matters. So that's how you do the rib nut. Again, you can uh, look to the instructions in the rib nut gun for how to use it properly, but uh, don't be afraid of it. It's not terribly difficult. As far as the hardware, this comes from me screwing things up my entire life. This is a bag of extras. So to install the riv nuts is an A bracket bag. And you can see that there's two riv nuts in there with some bolts. We're gonna go ahead and include some extra riv nuts, whether you wanna practice with one of them or you screw something up, 
We'd rather you have this stuff, but the important thing is most of the stuff you're installing with this kit is fairly standard. Uh, you may not have seen rib nuts at your hardware store before, but they probably have them and they certainly have quarter inch if they have rib nut sizes. So regardless, we include some extras there. That's what that extra bag is. Let's move on to the other tools that you're gonna need for this installation. You've got the two drill bits. You've got the rib nut gun with the quarter inch tip. You're gonna need a 7 16 wrench and a 9 16 wrench. You use 9 16 for almost everything that's owl. So the, you're gonna need these two uh, wrenches. As far as Allens go, you're gonna need a 7 seconds, a 3 16 and a 5 32nd. So those are gonna be to tighten the various uh, nuts and bolts throughout uh, the kit. So. I'm gonna get into the bracket now. We have an A bracket bag and a B bracket bag. Now, the way we decided to design the side steps was so that you could attach them, let's say you have a Winnebago Revel. You don't have to take the brackets that exist off. So most of this tutorial or our, our installation video will be for what we call a naked van, a DIY van, a van without a lot of stuff on it. Now, if you do have some tanks and so on on it, tanks are not hard to drop most of the time. You're unplugging um, an inlet or an outlet hose and then undoing some bolts and the tank comes out. So don't be afraid if you wanna drop your water tanks on your vehicle to install these. But let's go forward with the assumption that you're going to be installing these uh, on a full DIY van you're making yourself or on a brand new Sprinter. But I bring this up because we did make this bracket so that this part, which is the B portion of the bracket, this big, this big, upper part here we call our A por uh, portion and then we call this the B portion. The B portion will bolt, bolt directly up to Revel owner's side steps. I go over a whole compatibility video, you can watch that later, but these will mount to that. So um, if you already have a Revel and you're installing these on a Revel, you can actually uh, skip all of the rib nut A bracket installation because you've got them. You're gonna jump straight to this and arguably you wouldn't even really need a video because you're just gonna swap out the ones that you have on your Winnebago for these and mount the steps to it. It's fairly straightforward. Assuming you're doing a DIY, we wanted to show you how this bracket goes together. So there's a number of parts to it. You can see here, just for ease of demonstration, you've got the rib nuts on here. That is how it's gonna go into your van. So your van's gonna come down like this and it's got a pinch weld on the bottom. So this is actually gonna slot in like this, lever up. You're gonna be drilling uh, from the middle of the van out towards the world, installing those rib nuts. And then here, this is gonna rest on your pinch weld. And in here is your backing plate that comes loose. Let me pull that out. So this is your backing plate. It's slotted in case, uh, just for ease of install, this is gonna go inside the pinch weld. So this is gonna slot up, rotate like this. You're gonna drill your holes. This is gonna go on the back side of it. You're gonna put these, um, I think they're 5 16 uh, smaller bolts through this way, and then put the nut on the back side there. For installing the rib nuts, you're gonna to wanna to put a washer below that bolt before you thread the quarter inch bolts into the rib nuts that you've installed in your fan. I think that about covers the stuff that we wanna do at my desk. I know it's not terribly exciting to sit at my desk when you wanna to get to installing. So now we'll jump outside and we will start putting these on a van and show you how quickly it goes. Well, quickly because we're gonna edit it, but uh, for you, it'll be probably the better part of an afternoon. But when you're done, Think how awesome your van is gonna look. That's the important thing. All right, let's head outside. As I said when I was in my office, an A bracket looks like this. Nice, big and heavy and robust. And you're gonna have an A bracket bag. So what we're gonna do to start off, we gotta measure, where's my tape measure? Oh, I just had it, now it disappeared. Well, I grab a tape measure, but let me show you this. I will take you off the stand. One of the best things you can have for this installation, if you don't already have it, is a creeper. This is a Harbor Freight special. There's a lot of things I won't buy at Harbor Freight, anything you trust your life to, but a lot of things I will buy. Things like creepers, inexpensive. It's uh, worth its weight in gold for doing stuff like this. All right, so again, we measured, I pre-measured. You're going to measure live. Uh, when you drill this, because you've got this kind of textured undercoating, it's kind of like an orange peely kind of thing, on the drill... This is actually a smaller drill bit than we're gonna use. It doesn't really matter how much smaller. Smaller drill bits tend to walk less than big ones. So we're gonna dr uh, drill our pilot holes with the smaller drill bit, and then we're gonna size them up to uh, 
Of course, I had it in front of me inside. Quarter inch drill bit. Esteemed colleague, quarter inch? Yep. All right, esteemed colleague agrees. So I'm gonna set you down and I'm gonna start drilling this stuff. So the important thing here is to put positive pressure on this bracket in the upward direction so you get it as tight to the top of that pinch weld as possible. I've got a special little pen here, but any thin pen Sharpie will do. I'm pushing this up, it's lined up properly. I'm gonna drill, or excuse me, I'm gonna mark my holes here. And I'm actually gonna install this bracket's pinch weld bolts first so that we can then mark the top uh, holes where we're gonna put the riv nuts second, but this is gonna hold it in exactly the right spot. So now we get to drill. And when you're drilling this, you wanna just try to make sure you don't walk that bit around. So I'm gonna get off my creeper, my favorite tool here. <laughs> See if we can get you guys a little closer here. If you haven't drilled on your van before, it's a little bit of a scary proposition, but once you've done a couple of holes, you really don't care. It's easier than you think. All right, so now I'm gonna move up to my next size drill bit. And this is now the quarter inch drill bit. Now we've kind of got our pilot holes drilled. And this should go pretty quick. So this is the uh, 5 sixteenths. Quarter 20. I'm sorry, this is a quarter 20 bolt and we just wanna test fit that it fits through there. So that's a little tight, but it gets in there. Perfect, so those fit. So now what you wanna do, once you've test fit those and it works, is actually mount the bracket. Now don't forget, we are gonna paint these, but because we're gonna stick bolts through them right now, we're not gonna paint them yet. While we're doing the riv nuts, we're gonna paint them and then they have time to dry before we shove the bolt through. So now we're just gonna shove the bolt through as a placeholder. All right, look at that. Did it right the first try. That's because we designed it. All right, I'm going under to mark the additional holes as I go get my creeper that rolled away. Thank you. This is a little bit tighter. This is actually a two wheel drive van. So this is one of our new display vans that we're gonna build out. Because it's a display van, we didn't put a, uh, we didn't get a four wheel drive. They're hard to get right now. So since it's not really gonna get used, you'll have to pretend it's a four wheel drive. All right, can you guys see that back up? All right. So now you can see under here and you can see where the bracket is. And again, you see how this bracket's a little bit mobile still, cause you just have these bolts holding it in place. Uh, loosely, you're gonna wanna put some positive pressure on this so it's flat against this upper section here. And then I like to, so I don't get it in the wrong spot, I like to draw around the entirety of the circle there. This material is a little bit spongy, so it's a little bit hard to work with, but you get the idea. So now's the part where, before we move on, we're gonna paint these holes and one of the things I like to do is grab a piece of cardboard for the outside first let's paint the inside that's easy so we, this is again that, and you can use any any paint this is what I use rust-oleum rust remover it's a little bit of a rust inhibitor so you want to hit both sides of this because you just want to make sure you get all of that uh, bare metal sure. okay so what I do is I just grab a scrap piece of cardboard and you can hold this up here so you don't get any on your paint of your vehicle while you do this. And that's all gonna be covered. So you really don't have to worry about being Picasso with that because it's all gonna be covered by the bracket anyway. So now we're ready to go drill. Okay. So we still have the quarter inch drill bit in this drill from doing these uh, pinch welds. I'm gonna use that as a pilot drill bit for this. So you can just leave it in for the initial drilling.
And unlike my stupidity, you should be wearing safety goggles. Thank you. Oh, look at this. My esteemed colleague who also runs health and safety for us and makes sure we're OSHA compliant brought me safety goggles. Because I'm the only moron that's not on the workers' comp. And you don't want to put a ton of pressure on this as you drill it because you don't want that drill to suck through and go through anything else. So you just light pressure and when you get close to the end, which you can usually tell by the sound changing or the uh, resistance changing, you want to lighten up. Now we're going to switch to the, all right, now we are switching to the drill bit that is one size below three eighths, also known as 23 sixty fourths. But you knew, you knew that, you could do that in your head, right? This is easier on four wheel drive vans. So now if you get any burrs on here, if you're unwise like me, you can work them off with your fingers, but you might cut yourself. So just get like a little file or a flathead screwdriver, just knock those off so that you make sure your rivnet seat flat. So now we're gonna paint this again with our favorite little rattle can. Don't be shy, get on in there. Let that dry for a little bit and then we'll put the rivnet in. Now dry and by dry, I mean I really gave it like 30 seconds and uh, you should give it longer. So I'm gonna put the rib nuts in now. We've got the quarter inch bit on this and I'm just gonna crimp, tighten. Crimp, tighten. To make it easier, if you lightly hold the teeth, uh, the handles together, it screws in and out easier. Now I'm gonna load another rib nut. All right, this time let's count how many licks it takes to get the center of a Tootsie Pop. All right, we're in and we're tight. So one, Two, three, let's go four. All right, we went four. That feels pretty good. Now I'm gonna check to make sure they don't spin. If they spin, you gotta tighten them more. So you don't wanna under tighten them. We're just gonna put this bolt in. That's a good sign, it's not spinning yet. Let's just make sure we can snug them up. All right, that's snugging without spinning, that's a good sign. And you can repeat the process with the other side. The reason we ran that bolt in there is if you don't have your rib nuts tight enough, and you put the bolt in, when you go to tighten the bolt, the whole assembly will spin. It's not what you want. So you want to figure that out now before you go further. So I don't know, was that about a minute to put these two in? Maybe a little bit longer so you can understand that um, while not difficult, once you get uh, a few down the passenger side and a few down the driver's side, uh, it can be a little time consuming. At this point, we are ready to install the bracket on the pinch weld and then put in the bolts on top for the bracket and basically bracket A will be uh, installed. So if we're going through the pinch weld, we're not putting a washer on this. This is going to go straight in this way. So we're going to set this up here. And that goes straight through like that. And I get my other one. Wait, is this the same size that goes in the... They are, yeah. Made, made it as easy as possible. Okay. All right, so that goes through. And then you need the backing plate. And again, all this stuff will be powder coated. I should have said in the beginning. This is purely because... Um, all, all the powder coated ones go to customers. So we have the raw ones here. So we, if you move these bolts back a little bit, you slide this backing plate in from the back. All right, let me show you that. 
see how that looks. So putting these bolts to the pinch weld, I've fed the bolt through. You can see you've got this flat washer uh, that goes the length uh, all the way down and you don't need a nut on this. We're just, or excuse me, you don't need a washer. We're gonna go straight with a nut there. We are gonna put a washer and a bolt into the riv nuts there. So um, yeah, let's get this together. So I'm gonna put this in loosely up here. And again, we've got one of the bolts with a washer on it. And this is why you leave everything loose because sometimes it takes a little bit of effort to, or a little bit of moving things around to get everything to where it's not cross-threaded and it's installed. So now I've got everything loose. That is a good place to start. Get everything in before you start tightening anything down. Now on the positive, old Johnny didn't screw it up. We got the rib nuts in the right spot. So that's a good start. Now we're gonna tighten the pinch welds. Look at this, I've got a third hand helping me now. Fourth <laughs> hand, this is mind blowing. And this is a situation where it's just a matter of tightening it down now. So you hold the back side, tighten that front. And if you do make any mistakes while you're installing this, you're always welcome to reach out to customer support. You know, you can get some spares. Uh, if you screw stuff up, we do have the bag of extras, but uh, we wanna make sure this goes smoothly for you. So uh, feel free if you do have any questions along the way, to reach out to customer support. We usually can answer the calls during business hours. If it's on the weekend, we won't return calls until uh, the first workday after, but um, our email support is also a pretty quick turnaround. So whatever works best for you. And as far as uh, uh, torque specs, we don't really have a torque spec on these. They do have nylocks on them. So snug, not super tight. These are stainless bolts, stainless uh, is a fairly soft metal and so you don't want to over torque these uh probably like 20 ish pounds is about right same thing with the rib nuts rib nuts are not super robust so you don't want to go too tight on them you just want to snug them in and again these uh all these bolts are really doing is holding the bracket on force on these bolts so there you have it that's pretty simple You've got the two rib nuts with the bolts with washers coming around to the front. You've basically got your A bracket installed. You've got your two pinch weld bolts, and then this is hanging down. And what attaches to this are one of two things. There are two what we call B brackets. This bracket that looks like it's uh, got a bit of a chunk taken out of it is for the front step because that part of the side step is shaped slightly differently. And this back bracket is for the rest of the steps when you get to the main body of the step. And that'll make more sense as we get further along. These brackets, the way they mount, there's a right and a left. And the way you can tell is the direction of the vehicle. It's like your hair. Uh, it's like if you have long, beautiful flowing Fabio hair and you stick your head out the window and your hair's flowing this way. Well, it's the same with this. So uh, this bracket is gonna flow towards the back, which means as you put this on, it's gonna be shaped like that. Does that make sense? Now for the front one, for the first A bracket you install, it's gonna be this one with the notch out of it. And to install this, the B bracket to the A bracket is super easy. You've got the B bracket kit here. When you're installing this, snug it down, but don't really crank on it because we still want some adjustability in the entire assembly before we uh, uh, snug everything down. Uh, washer on both sides of these. We like to mount this on the leading edge of the bracket. So you're gonna put this on and then you've got another one here. Again, bolt and washer. Of course, you know what? I'm gonna put the washer or the nut, the washer and the nut on the backside instead of continuing to fumble with this. Again, these are nylocks, so you don't need to crank down on them too hard. And we're just snugging stuff up for now. 9 16 open-ended wrench, and I have a 7 seconds Allen driver. Lightly snug there.
Lightly snug there. She's still got a little bit, uh, it's a little bit too tight. But once you get some leverage of the actual footstep or sidestep, I should say, on here, then you've got a little bit more of an ability to move these around. Um, so that is pretty much a final assembly. And so we're basically gonna rinse and repeat over the whole side of the van. Now you're gonna be changing, as you move back, this will change to a uh, completely encased bracket, but the ins installation of the uh, A bracket portion is really the same. So now, um, we're gonna measure as we go back in through the magic of television, we're gonna have a completely installed set of side steps for you to look at. The van color may change. So here they are installed. I know we're jumping ahead a little bit and disregard the fact the color of the van has changed. But once you get those side brackets installed again, it's all the same. We'll take you underneath. It's really all the same as it was on that first bracket. You can see here they are powder coated. So we're just, and these brackets, this is an older design bracket, so disregard that, the new bracket's wider. But you can see you just we're putting it at 23 inches apart as we go down and actually and, and it's not 23 inches if you're at 22 it doesn't matter in fact because more weight is going to be on the earlier part of the step this spacing between these two is a little bit tighter but that's a general rule of thumb but you see how they all install it's pretty seamless and then to actually put the actually put the step onto the bracket you can see that you just simply set the bracket on and then you drop the 3 8 bolts through with washers and tighten them. And then you can kind of adjust this gap here by adjusting the bolts underneath and moving this bracket up and down, etc. The other aspect that we want to talk about is the tread plate. This is a pretty cool part of the product. This one's been installed, so disregard that bolt mark. Cool thing about this is it provides a lot of grip when you're getting in and out of the van. It's got this kind of sharper edge, not sharp enough to cut you, but sharp edge is going to grab your foot as you get out of the van and makes getting in and out really easy. And then it's got this boot cleaner down here for if you're in muddy or snowy or whatever terrain and you want to wipe your boots off. You can adjust where this is, but typically you want it near the opening of the slider door. So you can actually see how those overlap with those holes. So you can put it right there and install the entire step with the tread plate through it. Those would be the bolts on that side. And then you'd need additional bolts on this side, et cetera. Really for the tread plate, you only need a bolt, um, a couple of bolts to hold it in place. It's just kind of sitting on there. Um, you can choose to use this or not use this. It's really up to you. It's uh, for the end of it. That is how you install the side steps. Again, if you have any questions with the side steps or any issues, you can reach out to customer service. It is supported owl vans or 866 owl vans and they'll get you taken care of. I th look at how beautiful they look blend seamlessly right in there. I hope you're happy with your product. Again, we have a bunch of video tutorials on our uh, YouTube page and everything from how to install more of our products to just general van uh, and adventure van gear and how to use it. Uh, like and subscribe if you want to see this content. Thanks so much. <laughs>